the Nonprofit Podcast, powered by DonorBox. Have you heard of a rosebud and thorn activity? It's a great way to gauge the temperature of your organization and where you can make some quick adjustments. Today, we'll tackle how you can do this easily for your nonprofit. Welcome to the Nonprofit Podcast. I'm Kara, a fundraising coach at DonorBox. We are here each week with practical actions you can use today to increase donations and take your nonprofit to the next level tomorrow. Today, I'm joined by Jenna Lynch, nonprofit advocate here at DonorBox. She's led our DonorBox nonprofit community through this rosebud and thorn activity and will walk us through it today. Hang on until the end too, because we've got a great downloadable for you to put into action right now. Thanks, Kara. I am such a fan of this activity. Nonprofits are living things and are constantly growing and changing. And we all experience different things in our work in the nonprofit sector. Some days it feels like we're doing everything right. It feels so great. And then other days we feel like we're about to fall apart. And I think that many of us can relate to this, right? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Some days we're, yeah, we're, we're really just working hard to hold it together. Yeah. And sometimes it's hard to know, though, if what you're experiencing is normal or if it's something that you should really be paying attention to. So that's where the rosebud and thorn assessment comes in. And since we've just entered a new year, now is an especially great time for this type of quick assessment. So what exactly is this rose, bud, and thorn? It's um, a pretty simple activity, actually, uh, that anyone can do at any time. It's as popular in business as it is in schools, in mindfulness classes, but it's especially uh, useful for your nonprofit. So the idea is to evaluate a project or an event or even your day or your entire 2022 by highlighting a rose, bud, and thorn. So first, I want to talk about your rose. Okay, let's do it. What's let's the rose? It. So the rose is like that positive highlight. So if you're reviewing your day, maybe your rose is the pancakes that you had for breakfast. <laughs> or if you're reviewing a project, maybe it was the positive feedback you received from your client. Uh, and in a nonprofit organization, it might look like this. Like, we've been working on getting our new volunteer program up and running. It's been a huge success so far. So far. We have tons of new volunteers who are already becoming really reliable parts of our organization. So that's an example of a really great rose. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, your bud, the bud is an opportunity for improvement, so an idea you had or something that you're looking forward to. So this is that potential rose. Potential, I'm, yes, potential. This might be the new exercise program that you're starting, uh, planning to start this week or maybe an upcoming initiative that you're working on launching. In your organization, it could be something like, We've had a lot of success with our online fundraising efforts this year. Yay. Uh, but we're still trying to figure out how to reach new donors through social media. So mm -hmm. now we're starting to uh, find out some new strategies that will help us grow our social media following as well as our general donor base. So that could be your bud there. A bud. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. There's a lot of potential right there. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then Lastly, your thorns. So thorns are something that most of us are pretty good at spotting. It's anything that didn't go the way that you hoped it would. So it's that thorn in your side, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe you dropped your first pancake <laughs> when you were trying to flip it. Uh, that's me every time. Or uh, maybe it was an aspect of your new initiative that you weren't able to fully realize. Mm -hmm. And in your nonprofit, it might be you know something like, we're struggling to keep all of our data in order. Our databases are always in disarray. So we're not able to segment our donors properly, which means that we can't send our appeals in the right way. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely it does. So kind of the thorn in your side, something that you really need to work on. That makes sense. Yeah. So do you want to walk through a sample, Rose, Bud, and Thorn? You gave some good examples just now, but um, I know I recently helped plan a major donor event, and I thought maybe that might provide a good example. Sure. Let's do it. Let's walk through it. Okay. So help me out here. Sure. So let's start with the Rose. I have a couple of quick prompts to help us get started with this. Okay. So first, I'll ask, what are you most proud of with mm -hmm. this initiative? And the reason why I start with this is because it focuses on the bright side. And if you're doing this with a team, it really boosts your team's morale or maybe just your own morale. So starting with this will really help get things off on a good note. So what are you most proud of? 
Um, I'm most proud of that this event that we planned realized uh, a number of financial commitments for the year-end fundraising campaign. So this was a group of major donors that came together to pool their resources and collectively they um, provided about a hundred and ten thousand dollar match for a year-end matching challenge. So that was the outcome of that event. And I thought that was really fabulous. That's phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. Now, another question that you can ask for your rose would be, um, what was the highlight of the project? Mm -hmm. Uh, So in situations where you want to focus on events rather than goals, you can use this question as well. So that's Mm -hmm. a really great way to point out those bright spots that you might not have foreseen or had control over. Okay. So a highlight of the event um, was that this was a donor hosted event. So we had a super fan of the organization who opened his home and hosted about 35 people there, which was really nice. They provided the catering and it was really a very gracious opportunity. So I think that that was a highlight. And I think it was also a draw because if it was at the organization's headquarters or a local venue, it might not have been so enticing to attend. Right. That's excellent. Okay. Great. Right. That was easy. So on to the bud. Hmm. Um, what are you most looking forward to? And again, this captures the essence of the bud, things that are in the works that you're optimistic about. Or we could also flip it and say, what can you approve, improve upon um, with this event that you hosted? So if okay. you're still um, evaluating this or kind of having a retrospective, what would that look like? I think I'll start with what can we improve? So In this case, it was hard to get people to respond to the invitation. I think it was a fundraiser in November, and that selected group of people were probably invited to multiple fundraisers about that time of year. So it was hard to stand out. So maybe the time of year could change. The invitation could change. Maybe it could be more appealing or more personal. But also, I think board members could probably help make phone calls and really try to make that personal connection to get people to attend. So I think that that might be where we fell short. It was really hard to get people to commit. Overall, it worked out fine. I think that the goal attendance was probably closer to 50 and we had 35, but that's okay. So again, that makes sense. That's a bud, right? So it's okay, but it could be better. And what are we most looking forward to? Oh, I think just kind of honing the event, maybe making it better for next year having more intentional activities or something along those lines or more conversations before the event to so that people understand that it is a fundraiser and we're, we're trying to raise this match pool for a year-end challenge. But I think just making it better would be what I'm looking forward to. So those are great, especially there can be that fine line between that thorn and the bud. Mm-hmm. The difference is, is that with the bud, there are are things that are in the works. So you're bringing fresh ideas to the surface, which really invigorates what you're doing in this process. And it really helps with how your team is moving forward. So you're already realizing that there is a new process to be had. So that is your bud there. That's great. Okay, cool. Awesome. Okay, now thorns. The Mm. thorn is probably the least pleasant to discuss. uh, But starting with this question will help team members vent their stress rather than focusing on their failures. Uh, So what caused you the most stress during this event? Mm -hmm. I think it was all the unknowns. So, you know, at first we hesitated on the venue uh, that we were going to choose before the uh, donor stepped up and offered his home. So there was some stress there and just making sure that it fit within the budget. And I think too, what else caused the most stress was creating a program that I hate to say was was maybe like not a dog and pony show. So really making something sound very impactful and moving and motivating to inspire the these large gifts from people. And that was really stressful. It ended up fine. We had the executive director speak and the board chair. This is really great. And with this thorn part, the goal is to be as constructive as possible. Mm-hmm. So it's really important to avoid pointing out problems that can't be improved. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when thinking about these thorns, uh, like I said, it can be easy to think about it again and become stressed. But uh, moving, removing these thorns requires a solution. So Mm -hmm. it sounds like uh, you've got some things in your mind, the team that you can use to effectively remove these thorns Mm -hmm. for the next event. Yeah. And another thorn I think too, for that event was identifying the right people to invite. Mm -hmm. So segmenting the list, looking at their past history and potential and 
and who they know that might also be attending. And so it's sometimes hard to glean all that information if your data is not, you know, squeaky clean. Um, So that was really hard too. Yeah. But again, that, that can be improved upon. So that's good. Absolutely. Okay. So that was really great. It was easy. Typical time required for this activity. What do you think? What what would most, I guess, depending on what they're evaluating, um, how much time would you set aside for an activity like this? If you're doing it just yourself, uh, we have many uh, nonprofit professionals listening that are a mighty team of one. One. <laughs> 15, 20 minutes. Um, You know, when you're doing this, I think it's really great if you come up with multiple roses, buds, and thorns. I think it can be more helpful than just choosing one. So I'd say 15 minutes to reflect upon these. And then, you know, as, as you work through these, if you're part of a group, you know, make sure that you're taking time to look at the things that you've written down and come up with things that you'll replicate from your, from your roses, how you're going to grow your buds and how you're going to remove those thorns. So that's Mm -hmm. one of the most important parts of it, but it can really be done quite quickly. Okay. We, We know that we do have a lot of listeners that are a team of one. Is it helpful to have another person on board or a team of people on board to help you evaluate? You know, I think it depends on what you're evaluating, mm-hmm. right? This really, this is an activity that can apply to all, which is something that I really appreciate. It's less intense than one of those SWOT analysis or mm-hmm. uh, something like that. So you could do this on your own and it could be perfectly effective. You could evaluate um, how you are as a nonprofit leader, just overall, um, you know, how you are facing your mission as a team of one. On, you know, how you're moving forward in the goals of your organization. But if you are evaluating something like an event, bring on your mm-hmm. event chair, your board members, whatever that may be, people who you truly trust, who you would include in any of your processes like this uh, can be really helpful. I would say I try not to make it a massive amount of people, maybe three to five, because uh, it could end up being an entirely different beast. Mm-hmm. And, and this really is meant to be quick, reflective, and kind of also cathartic in a way, I think. So you don't want to make it too messy. Okay. So don't make it too much work. Don't make it too cumbersome and don't overthink it, right? So this seems like a really great and really uncomplicated way to gain some serious insight from all members of the team, even those who would usually shy away from giving their input. This is not really that intimidating. I love that. Yeah. I absolutely agree. You could easily do this activity to recap your giving season too, couldn't you? I mean, it could be an event. It could be something tangible, but it could be just your overall, it could be a season in your nonprofit. Yep, absolutely. And like I said, going into the new year is a great time to do one Mm -hmm. of these activities. You could uh, reflect on your giving season and how those initiatives went, or you could use the same activity to reflect on what your plans are for 2023. It really can't go both ways, but absolutely. I think this is a great activity to look at what went well, what you've got in the works and what you should correct if you need to. So let me see if I can recap this correctly. A rose is something that's working for your organization. It's positive. A bud is an area of opportunity, something that maybe you want to explore a little further. And a thorn is something that isn't working or is having a negative impact on your organization. But that thorn should be something that could be fixed, correct? That's exactly right. You got it. Awesome. Jenna, thank you so much. I really appreciate you sharing this quick assessment. And I think it's something that can be done at any time for anything. So I'm going to use it in my personal work too. So thank you. You're so welcome. Thanks for taking the time to talk about this today. Yeah, of course. It was my pleasure. I learned a lot. And I want to thank you for choosing to spend time with the Nonprofit Podcast. We have a downloadable for you to walk through this exercise on your own or with your team. It has a couple prompts, like Jenna mentioned, to kick off that thought process, and we hope that you find it helpful. You can find your downloadable in today's show notes. And I hope you've left with confidence to take a small step today that will make a big difference tomorrow. Don't forget to download and review the podcast or give it a thumbs up if you're listening to the Nonprofit Podcast on YouTube. Your review is a great way to help others find us. You're here to help others. We're here to help you. So until next time, stay inspired. People, passion, connection, action. Put the power to change the world in your supporters' hands this giving season. Maximum reach, maximum impact. Feel the fundraising power of connection. DonorBox Peer to Peer, helping you help others.